everybody. Um, so I decided to make a video um, about a couple of my favourite DBT skills um, and one that I used last night. Um, so last night as I was going to bed um, I could feel a bit of anxiety rising in me. Um, you know I often get really emotional in the evenings and at night time um, and actually uh, I was in bed with my boyfriend and he was asleep um, and I could just feel this anxiety rising in me and these emotions just completely taking over um, and I was just felt really sad. I actually how was having a lot of suicidal thoughts. I was feeling really out of control. My body was starting to um, tense up. Everything just was overwhelming. Thoughts were racing. Um, and what I did, um, I actually turned to um, the DBT stop skill. So the this handbook here is the DBT skills training and handouts and worksheets. Um, it's the one by Marsha Linehan, um, who is the founding mother of DBT. Um, and to my surprise, this stop skill actually worked. Um, and it really, really helped and actually averted um, possibly even a crisis. So I thought maybe I would explain um, how I did the stop skill. Um, and yeah, so so STOP, it's, uh, it's an acronym and it's S-T-O-P and the S stands for STOP and it basically means stop in your tracks, do not behave impulsively, do not act on emotion because I don't know about you but when I'm in an emotional state and I'm in emotional mind it's all very much do, 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 make decisions, change things, I can't cope, I need to run away, I need to do this, I need to quit my job, I need to leave my relationship, nobody loves me, I can't cope anymore, let me get away. And it's all very, very irrational, very fast, very scary, very flighty. So I think the first part of stop skill is just to, to just freeze, freeze. And I know that some people actually physically freeze themselves and they just say, stop it's just to pause you to stop you from destructing basically um and the second one t is um some people call it take a break and some people call it take a breath um this book here actually calls it take a step back um but i do take a breath um and what i did was i actually started taking really deep breaths really noisy really noisy deep breaths um you know and i was counting in for four holding for two out for four holding for two and i remembered that my therapist had told me you can't just do three breaths you can't just do you know 10 breaths you might need to do 20 30 40 breaths because people with borderline personality disorder emotions tend to be really strong um they come very quickly but they take quite a long time to go down longer than other people. Um, so really it's intensity in length, suddenness and how strong they feel. Um, so, you know, if you're going to do pace breathing or you're going to stop and take a breath, you probably need to go need to take more breaths than, say, the average Joe is going to need to take. You're probably going to need to double, triple, you know, quadruple the amount of breaths to take because the emotion is just so strong um okay so the next one is observe um that's the next part of the skill and actually i think it's probably one of the hardest um observe is one of the mindfulness skills and it's about noticing what those thoughts are that are going through your head so instead of um thinking oh my god i'm out of control I can't cope, I'm gonna die, uh, I'm gonna have a crisis, nobody loves me, I'm worthless. You have to notice and observe that you're going through this incredibly scary, um, incredibly intense emotional situation and it's very frightening. So it's about observing, oh, I'm going through this really, really intense emotional state. Um, and it's, it, this is an emotional state that I'm going through. It's not, um, you know, oh, it's really hard to explain. Um, yeah. Oh, fuck. And, um, you know, a lot of that is um, 
noticing body sensations. So, for example, last night, my whole face, neck and back had just completely tensed up. Um, that happens all the time anyway for me. Uh, it's just kind of chronic pain in this sort of area of my body, um, which is really unpleasant. I've actually written a post about it on my blog. Um, but just to observe that because of this anxiety, your body or my body has actually tensed up, ready for attack. Um, so just to observe that, um, observe those thoughts, those fearful thoughts, those absolutely terrifying thoughts. Um, yeah, just to observe them. It's not acting on them, it's just seeing that they're happening. And then P um, stands for proceed mindfully. Um, what this isn't is proceed like a bull in a china shop, run around, uh, start making loads of decisions, start changing your life, um, start thinking, oh God, I can't go to work next week, um, you know, I, I can't cope with anything, I should change my life, I'm probably going to be hospitalised, um, I'm probably going to have no friends, it's, it's proceeding mindfully. So for me last night that was, okay, I'm in bed, I'm trying to sleep, the best thing for me right now would be to go to sleep and think about it in the morning because I'll be rested. So how am I gonna go to sleep? That would be proceeding mindfully, thinking about what's best for myself, actually best for myself, rationally, not, oh, it's best for me to quit my job but it's best for me to leave all my relationships, it's best for me to die. No, that's not, that's not the best situation. In rational mind, in wise mind, I would not be thinking like that. That's my emotional mind taking over. So actually it's about making a little plan, a very small plan. This is not a big plan to change your life. This is a small plan. Okay, I need to go to sleep now. So what shall I do? Shall I go downstairs and make a cup of tea um, to calm myself? Um, should, I, should I read a book for five, 10 minutes? Or should I just lie here and listen to some audiobooks or some meditation apps? Or do I need to do more paced breathing? And what I did, I did more paced breathing and I actually fell to sleep after a few minutes. Um, and when I woke up the next day, I thought, what was that all about? Which is what I think all the time. Um, and it's just so confusing. It is so, 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 so confusing. Um, but there we go. So just to round up this um, little video, um, I thought I'd just say that this handbook, this DBT skills training handout and work, uh, bleh, handouts and worksheets is really, really useful. And I will put the link um, below on where to buy this one. Um, and also this one, I love this book. It's really, really nice. Um, one of the reasons I like it is that um, it's not stigmatising and discriminatory like a lot of the books about people with BPD. Um, it doesn't subscribe to the stereotypes and really when I read this I had a feeling of, wow, this person who wrote the book, in fact these two people who wrote these, the book, Blaise Aguirre and Gillian Galen, um, I felt like, okay, they really get what BPD is all about. Um, and yeah, I might do another vlog about that um, to go through it in more detail, um, but I'll put the link there as well. And I hope if you check it out, you find that one useful. Um, thank you, everybody. Bye.